There is one thing productivity YouTubers know absolutely nothing about women. Well, either that or they're deliberately withholding information for their own personal gain. Think about it. The subscriber who harnesses the power of their cycle no longer needs to listen to patriarchal productivity tips from the half of the population that can roll out of bed, throw on a shirt and go to work without anyone questioning whether they're sleep deprived or sick if they're not wearing any makeup. Seriously, who put them in charge of productivity? Anyone who's watched The Apprentice and observed as those women immaculately paint their faces and blow dry their hair all in the time it takes the men to button up their shirts will know exactly what I'm talking about. We have been conned. Chances are if you like productivity YouTube and you have a menstrual cycle then you have wasted valuable time having productivity mansplained to you despite generations of women managing to cook, clean, build communities, raise children, look after their elders and only fairly recently have thriving careers on top of all of that. Your ancestors would be disappointed. Not only have you wasted time listening to this male-centric drivel but if you you weren't aware of the productivity secret that I'm about to share with you, you have potentially wasted hours, days, weeks, even months of supercharged productivity just because you have a cycle. The infrastructure of the patriarchal society is built around the 24 hour male cycle and not the roughly 28 day cycle of the other 50% of the population. And of course, this is a huge barrier to women across all aspects of their life. But lucky for you, I'm about to share with you hacks and strategies for how you can not only minimize the impact this has on your education and career, but also how you can use this as a superpower. If you're new here, then my name is Faye. I am a final year medical student, kind of, and I'm on a mission to include uniquely female productivity problems in a space where these issues have been consistently ignored. And in this video, we are gonna be focusing on your period. If you want to see more of this, then do me a favor and hit the subscribe button so I can get one step closer to hitting 100k. A message to those of you who've never menstruated and never will. If you've made it this far despite my mildly man-hating rhetoric, then well done. I would strongly encourage you to watch till the end. All of us have people we love that go through cycles, whether that's partners, children, parents, or friends, and for too long this huge part of our lives has been downplayed or frankly ignored. Don't go and to create a world that ultimately works better for us we need you guys to understand too so please please watch till the end now don't switch off this video if you are on birth control you're trans or you don't get a period at all because you still might have fluctuations in your hormones and cyclical symptoms so there are plenty of tips here for you too timestamps are below skip to any section that you're most interested in guys i promise i will not be offended and finally let's get into it we're going to start with a little bit of oversharing as we tend to do on this channel and go through my to be frank traumatic relationship that i have with my uterus like so many other girls growing up the importance of understanding where you are in your cycle was never highlighted to me but thank god i know how to put a condom on a dildo whilst wearing beer goggles i knew when i was going to come on i knew how to deal with it when i came on i'm hemorrhaging what do you mean you're hemorrhaging but all the other intricacies that help us be happier and more productive people were never spoken about i would have these days where i was sensitive emotional and motivated i would argue with my friends my family i would neglect schoolwork and it was only once the damage was done and mother nature finally crawled out from the rock that she'd been hiding under and suddenly the mystery was solved what started out as a fishing trip sure ended in a dandy mystery even a basic understanding from early on would have helped me predict these emotional changes, deal with them better, and ultimately stop blaming myself. Before we get into this part of the story, I wanna explain that I am by no means anti-birth control. I think birth control is one of the miracles of modern medicine and has propelled women's rights in the last century. But my experience over the almost a decade of being on birth control has not been pleasant, including but not limited to the coil perforating the wall of my cervix and and the implant causing me to bleed for six months. 
<laughs> single and not really ready to mingle. I decided to get my implant taken out in January of this year and try something called Natural Cycles. Now, Natural Cycles is an app capable of many things, but amongst other things, you can track your period. And it also includes a lot of really useful information about your cycle. And guys, this completely revolutionized my life. I felt empowered and in control and no longer a servant's mother nature and able to use each stage of my cycle to its strengths. I use natural cycles and I have loved it. However, there are lots of other apps you can use to track your period, including the ones that are already built into your phone. However, I would advise using an app that promises to never sell your data because following on from Roe versus Wade, there have been some scary stories coming out about the possibility of this information being used to incriminate you in a court of law. You have made it through my waffling and we are finally at the hacks, the vital information that is gonna revolutionize your productivity. I've split the hacks up into the strengths, what this phase of your cycle is particularly good for, and the strategies, which are ways to optimize the strengths, minimize the setbacks, and scenarios of how I personally implement them into my own life. Now I'm going to take you back to a sweaty, BO stenched high school classroom because guys, we are getting back to basics. I'm sure you're aware that the two main hormones at play in the menstrual cycle are estrogen and progesterone and testosterone does get a special mention. We are going to start with the follicular phase. The lining of the womb is thickening and estrogen is rising. Then moving on to ovulation. Now this is the roughly 24 hour period when an egg is released from the ovary and testosterone peaks. Next, we have the luteal phase. This is the longest phase of your cycle and it is progesterone dominant. The way I used to remember the follicular phase and the luteal phase in my A-levels was follicular first and then luteal later. Those two phases are the most important and distinct then finally, you guessed it, we have everyone's favorite time of the month, menstruation. This is when the lining of your womb sheds. Your uterine lining is decaying and then sloughing off and turning into blood as it moves out of your vaginal canal. And it is what we know and love as a period. Moving swiftly along, I am gonna to talk to you about my personal favorite phase of my cycle, the follicular phase. If the follicular phase was a supplement, it would be Barocca. If it was a lip shade, it would be Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. If it was a beer, it would be Carlsberg. You get the gist. This also brings me on to a massive pet peeve I have about the menstrual cycle. Why is the menstrual cycle called the menstrual cycle when, let's be honest, it's the time of the month when we're not exactly at our best? I feel like I want to murder someone and I also I want soft pretzels. It's the epitome of a society that weaponizes womanhood to focus on the few days where we are probably not at our peak. So I'm starting a petition to rename the menstrual cycle the follicular cycle. Please sign below. So why is it my favorite phase of the menstrual cycle? Estrogen is rising, you are God tier you. This is the few days of the month you have to harness this elite level of productivity that you might have been missing out on since your teens. Your main strengths during this period are creativity and productivity. So how do I implement this into my personal life, my education and my career? Now I have very strong feelings on manifestation that would probably upset both sides of the coin, but that is a video for another day. How it applies to this video is this is the time of the month when I manifest. As a society, we tend to focus on reviewing our lives at the start of the new year, on a Monday, on the first of the month. But if you're a woman, to be honest, you've been doing it wrong. Let's say you want to start a new positive habit, a new exercise regime, focusing on a more balanced and nutritious diet, a new morning routine, anything. Next time you have the intention of starting these new habits, start it the day or two days after you finish your period when you are in your follicular stage. We all know starting on a Monday never works. And if you have a menstrual cycle, this could potentially be why. Next, how do I implement this into my education? This is a perfect time to set out a plan, get ahead on coursework. If you don't have any exams closed, then this is a good time to create resources like flashcards, condensed notes, or questions so that you have those resources ready to go when exam season does roll around. Or if you do have an exam season close and maybe you were planning on getting into exam mode in two or three weeks time, 
time, you could consider bringing that forward by two or three weeks so that you're starting that new routine in your follicular phase and thus giving yourself the best chance of allowing these habits to stick before you move on to the later stages of your cycle. I know for me personally, I am incredible at making a revision plan. I am terrible at starting it. But this is the time of the month when most of us with the cycle do have more energy and it would be stupid to not harness this energy to propel you through the hardest task of exam season, getting started. I've been a little bit of a bitch. Despite this video coming for productivity YouTubers neglecting the female perspective, I have to admit the likes of Ali Abdel and Thomas Frank have revolutionized my life in many ways. They both have productivity classes on Skillshare and there is one other Skillshare course that I want to recommend to you today, which you'll find particularly interesting if like me, you have ADHD or you think you might have ADHD. Thomas Frank's Mastering Productivity creates a system that works, covers everything from all organizing your calendar, your emails, and your digital files. And I love Ali Abdal's Productivity Masterclass, Principles and Tools to Boost Productivity, because it dissects the concepts behind productivity in a greater depth and gives us a better understanding of what's going on in our heads. But not our uteruses. About two months ago, I got diagnosed with ADHD and it suddenly made a lot more sense why I have always struggled with my time management, organization and procrastination. I know from the comments that a lot of you also have ADHD or think you might have ADHD, which may explain why traditional productivity hacks might not work for you. But the good news is that Kate also has ADHD and her productivity system was designed in response to her ADHD diagnosis and has facilitated the growth of her leading lifestyle brand and social media following. And the best news is if you want to access all these classes and many, many more completely for free, then all you have to do is click the link in the description. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get access to a one month free Skillshare trial. So click the link as soon as possible if you want to start learning, growing and discovering on Skillshare today. Now it's time for your career. For me personally, I know that later on down the month when I'm not feeling as 10 out of 10, I really struggle with creative block. How that applies to me is obviously with the YouTube side of things, I have nothing. I have no idea what videos I wanna film. I have no inspiration. Whereas in the follicular phase, I almost feel like I have too many ideas going around in my head that I can't harness them at once. Case in point, I'm literally in my follicular phase right now and I've written down seven video ideas this morning. So the most important thing that you can do in this phase of your cycle for your career is always have something on hand to jot down any idea you have. This could be small, stupid, ridiculous, groundbreaking, anything. There are so many ideas that I jot down and then two days later I look at and go, Faye, what a load of bollocks that was. But just having those ideas down, you have no idea how that will help you later on down the cycle when you're experiencing a little bit of creative block. And I'm not just talking about if you are a creative, if you are an artist, photographer, a musician, creativity is a transferable skill we all need in all of our careers. The ideas that you have could be ways to tackle a problem you're experiencing, ideas for how you can bring together your team, innovative directions for your company, or given that you're just feeling a little bit more productive, it could just be a time to get ahead on paperwork. So my three main points for the follicular phase are capitalize on the energy that you have to get ahead, utilize this time to spearhead positive habits and document any idea that you have big or small. Now is the time to ask you how you have your eggs in the morning because we are moving on to ovulation, baby. As I said, this is the time of the month when your testosterone peaks, the egg is released. Science actually shows that you're your most attractive at this point and thus you could draw conclusions that you're probably gonna be a little bit more confident Confident. So the strengths for your ovulation phase are communication and social skills. This is only a 24 hour period. However, your hormones don't drastically increase. So you may experience these symptoms during the few days around your ovulation. In my personal life, I love to spend time with my loved ones, reconnect with people I might have lost touch with, and also address any issues that might be bubbling up under the surface. If there's an issue you're having with a partner or friend, this could be a great time to bring it up if you're experiencing improved communication skills because you'll probably deal with it a lot better than later on down your cycle where you might be a little bit more emotionally unhinged. 
We all know how much worse things become when we let them build up and don't address them. Now imagine factoring female hormones. In your education, this is a great time to bring up any concerns you might have with your teachers or lecturers. If there are any practical elements to your course, for example, speaking assessments, presentations, group work, then if there's any flexibility, it could be a great idea to schedule them in to the time around your follicular phase or your ovulation to capitalize on this confidence and improved communication. Another great activity for your ovulatory phase if you are a student is maybe trying to run some revision classes. One of the best ways to revise is teaching others and if it's something that you want to try then giving it a go during this period is a great idea. Next, your career. So many people are choosing to work from home more and go into the office less but this is the time of the month you should consider going into the office and engaging in collaborative work. You could schedule your important meetings for now, go to networking events, do any public speaking or presentations or even job interviews if possible. The take home points from your ovulation phase are capitalize on your confidence, work collaboratively and be a little bit more social. Next up is our luteal phase, the longest phase of our cycle. Progesterone is more dominant in this phase and thus it can have a significant impact on your mood and your desire to socialize. As we move to later on in the cycle, it's easy to focus on the negatives, but in the same way you can't compare the sun and the moon, each phase has its own unique strengths. And in a society that demonizes the menstrual cycle and focuses on the weaknesses. And God made Eve from the rib of Adam, and it was weak and loosed the raven on the world. And the raven was called sin. It's so important that we educate ourselves on the strengths that we have during each phase. In the luteal phase, your strengths are independence and productivity. Wanting to spend a little bit more time just with yourself is not a weakness. This can be an invaluable time to get your head down and get cracking with tasks that you can't complete with a group. The way I like to use this in my personal life is to get my head down and tie up any loose ends I have. That might be life admin, taxes, paying bills, all the boring stuff that you just need to be alone and crack on with. I also like to use this time to really indulge in some good quality self-care where whether that is tinting my eyebrows, doing a face mask, having a bath, painting my nails, whatever it may be, really take some time to indulge in yourself. In your education, this is your time to get your head in the books, get ahead on coursework, get all your due Anki cards done, or even do some research for an upcoming essay. It could also be a time that you shift your normal study location to your desk at home or the silent area of the library. Then in your career, if your ovulatory phase was all about collaborative working this is the time when you can make headway independently on all those projects that you started in the ovulatory phase with your team I know for me personally I love to work in a group I am a sociable person I way prefer to sit and talk to other people but there are just some tasks that it is way more efficient for you to just get done yourself and this is the perfect time to utilize the clarity of independence to just get done if you're lucky enough to have the flexibility of work from home, if you went into the office for your ovulatory and follicular phases, then this could be the time that you benefit from a little bit of work from home comfort. So my key points for the luteal phase, get your head down, tie up loose ends and indulge in good quality self-care. Finally guys, the phase that we all know and love menstruation. If you've experienced the cycle, then you will understand the intense emotions that you can feel during this time. Just last week, I Kim Kardashian cried to my boyfriend for the first time, the poor soul, and it completely came out of nowhere. There's something about that inconsolable, dramatic outpour of emotions that happens on your period that is like no other sadness I experience at any other point during the month. I actually don't really cry unless I'm on my period or the week before my period. And yes, I have have had a period emotional outburst over a snapped hair tie but also a lot of the time these emotional outbursts during my period are over issues that I have buried and not dealt with at other points during the month. This period of the cycle is the most stigmatized. You're all menstruating! Luke no! And aside from society's general aversion to the idea of 
a woman bleeding out her vagina. A large part of this stigma also comes down to the heightened emotions that we can feel during this time. The classic comments, oh, it must be your time of the month. Do you need a tampon? Oh, take your tampon out, Dave. And this really pisses me off. This insight into our emotions is one of our greatest strengths. Whilst the lining of our womb is shedding, this is also a really important time when we can shed the emotions that we have built up over the past cycle so that we can move into our next cycle feeling refreshed, revitalized, and emotionally relieved. Let me tell you, when I had my Kim Kardashian crying episode last week, I cried myself to sleep. And then the next morning, I woke up like a new woman. If anyone has ever experienced a post-emotional breakdown nap, you will understand what I'm talking about. The sleep that you have after crying is impeccable. Tears can be a response to something physical in our eyes, but there's also a reason that we cry when there's no physical object in our eyes, but just when we are feeling a certain type of way. That is not a mistake. And this is a time when we need to let it all out. We need to uncover these emotions that we've been ignoring. The demonization of our ability to feel our emotions is a tool of oppression when it's a superpower that should not be minimized. This is your time to feel. The strengths of menstrual phase are reflection and intuition. In your personal life, this is an incredible time to journal, to really uncover all those deep emotions that you're feeling. Allow yourself to cry, watch all the soppy movies you want. Just do not bottle it up. If you utilize this phase correctly, it can be an incredible emotional reset. But due to societal norms, you might have been resisting these instincts and suppressing your emotions. In your education, if you feel like you're lacking a little bit of direction, this is a revelationary time when you can use your intuition to reflect on what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you angry, what stirs you deep down and hone in on that to carve out a career pathway that you're passionate about and allows you to make a positive impact on the world. In your career and with this period when negative feelings rise to the surface, sometimes we might feel like a failure or think a lot more about our shortcomings. But in response to this, I want you to reflect on your successes and how far you've come to try transform those tears of failure into tears of pride. Work might also seem a little bit more stressful than normal, but if you know that you're in your menstrual phase, this might encourage you to try utilize the people around you a little bit more and delegate during this time. On top of all of that, if you're feeling like you've lost your passion, this can be a really great time to reconnect with why you're doing what you're doing, what it is that makes you passionate and the impact you're having on other people. Another incredible strength of this period is given the heightened emotions, you're probably a lot more empathic. Empathy is an invaluable tool in problem solving and teamwork. You might be able to see the perspectives of the people you work with or for a lot better and this in turn could make you a better employee or come up with better solutions to problems. In short, this is a great time to put yourselves in the shoes of other people. My key points for the menstrual phase, allow yourself to feel, take this time to reflect and use empathy to your advantage. Like everything good in life, there is a small caveat. Some of the research to support these claims is entrenched in basic scientific knowledge. However, there are some claims that there was limited scientific evidence for, and the scientist in me didn't want to include them. We are all about evidence base here. It is something that is drilled into us from very early on in medical school. However, I still made the decision to include them, and I'm going to tell you why. Research into women's health and the menstrual cycle is notoriously underfunded and under-researched. Case in point, erectile dysfunction studies outnumber PMS studies five to one. And to add insult to injury, nine out of 10 women suffer from PMS symptoms in comparison to the 19% of men who suffer with erectile dysfunction. Obviously, erectile dysfunction is a serious condition. However, having sex is a choice. You don't get to choose whether you have your period or not. Another reason I decided to include this information is because anecdotally, everything that I've said is in line with the way that I feel during my cycle and these strategies have really helped me personally. Whether scientifically sound or not, the suggestions I've made will not do you any harm. See this as a blueprint to be adapted to your own cycle. The point of this video is not to be a one size fits all. It is to spark an interest in your own cycle and to use your own learning to spearhead your productivity and success. This structure is a tool to springboard your own insights and inspire your own strategies. 
Unfortunately, as we all know too well, this is a man's world and implementing these strategies to work around your cycle isn't always gonna be possible. The knowledge is power, baby. And even small adjustments you make to your life may have groundbreaking impacts on your education, career, and personal life. Just once, I would like Phil to have a little empathy. Give me some sense that he understands what women go through. A message for my non-menstruators. Women make up about 50% of the population and hopefully this video will allow you to be a better co-worker, partner or friend. Women have spent centuries working around the patriarchal 24 hour cycle and any small changes you can make around the 28 day cycle are a long awaited step in the right direction. And finally, a message for my bleeder. I think my teens would have been a lot easier had prepubescent Faye had access to these hacks. If there's someone in your life you think might benefit from this video, then please could you do them and me a favor and share this video with them. I would be being a huge hypocrite if I was complaining about male productivity YouTubers not acknowledging the importance of the menstrual cycle on productivity, whilst also myself not acknowledging one of the biggest obstacles for millions of women across the world, period poverty. Because of this, I will be donating all the ad revenue from this video to ActionAid, which is an international charity that works with women and girls living in poverty across the world. That does mean that if you watch till the end of the video, then more money will go to ActionAid, so even if you leave it on in the background while you're doing your laundry. Just don't tell YouTube that. The World Bank estimates that at least, at least 500 million women and girls lack the facilities they need to manage their period. If you want to have an impact closer to home, the next time you go in to pick up your groceries, maybe consider grabbing a couple of tampons or pads and dropping them off at a food bank or shelter. These are amongst the most requested products, but sometimes the least donated. I want to highlight the unique menstrual struggles faced by trans men, trans women, and non-binary people. Trans men can get periods and trans women may experience PMS symptoms whilst taking hormones. And due to societal norms, poor sex education and transphobia, it can be even harder to access vital information about their cycles. I'm not an expert on this topic by any means and I'm still learning, but I have included some links to people more in the know in the description box below. If you have watched this video and you're trans or non-binary, I hope you feel welcome and I hope that you have learned something too. If you feel comfortable, then please feel free to share your experiences and tips in the comments below. To me, deepening your understanding of your body and your cycle is the epitome of empowerment. Knowledge really is power and I hope that you're walking away from this video more knowledgeable and able to implement your knowledge into asserting power and control over your own life. I want to end on a quote by Miss Gloria Steinem. Girls are taught to view their bodies as unending projects to work on, whereas boys are taught to view their bodies as tools to master their environment. It's high time that we learned the tools that we needed and leveraged our power to create environments that are more accommodating for us, instead of trying to fit into a society that, that wasn't built with monthly cycles in mind. There are many uniquely female productivity problems that are consistently ignored by male productivity YouTubers who dominate this space. And this is the first video of many where I hope to tackle those issues. Comment a red blood emoji if you made it this far or even a way that you're going to implement the tools and strategies that I've told you today in your own life. If you could like this video so more people see it and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn a little bit more about productivity as a female. As always, thank you so, so, so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. I'm actually in my follicular phase so I'm going to have a fucking great week. Mm.